Hello and welcome to another year of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today I am working in grade 5, my new grade for the year, and I'm working on module 1, lesson 1. The objective tonight is a complicated mouthful. It is to reason concretely and pictorially using place value understanding to relate adjacent based 10 units from millions to thousands. Holy cow. All right, well, I'm going to summarize that in my words, and I'm going to say we're working with place value tonight, and we're just going to work in units of 10. So how's that for a simpler version? Um, I'm going to take a look at, let's see, uh, probably about four problems tonight to take a look at your homework. Hopefully this will give you a little bit of a hand, a little bit of a review of how we did place value in fourth grade, and it'll get you going on your homework. Let's take a look at our first problem. Problem number one, let's read together. Uh, problem number one asks us to use the place value chart and arrows to show how the value of each digit changes. The first one has been done for you. So let's take a look at 1a, the one that they did for us. Let's see, we start off with this number, that's 4.582, 4.582. And let's see, did they do that correctly? Let's see, 4.582. Awesome. You know, I think actually it would be helpful if we put in some units here. So these are really ones, and those are tens, and these are hundreds and these must be thousands, and then over here we've got tenths, so that's 0 0.1, and then we must have hundredths, and then we have thousands, 0 0.001. Oop, almost went off the edge there. And then what are we multiplying that by? Oh, I see, we're multiplying it by 10. And let's take a look at how they transform this number. So it looks like for each place value, so the 4 in the 1 spot, so 4 1s, they said, well, if we multiply that times 10, that would slide it out one place value to the left, right, into the 10s column. So 4 times 10 is the same as 4 tenths, or 40. And then they did that for each of the other digits. So 5 tenths becomes 5 1s, and 8 hundredths becomes eight tenths, and two thousandths becomes two hundredths. So I see they slid those all out. So that's when you multiply by ten. I'm going to leave for, for you to both label the diagram for 1B. Uh, you'll label your place value chart. You'll decide where to insert the number 7.281, and then you're going to decide what happens when you multiply by 100. If you multiplied by 10 up here and moved everything over one place value, I wonder how many place values you'll move when you multiply by 100. I'll let you figure that out. Let's take a look at problem number two, and I'll do one of those problems for you. But let's look at the instructions first. Problem number two asks us to use the place value chart and arrows to show how the value of each digit changes. Oh, same as the first one. The first one has been done for you. Okay, well, again, let's take a look at 2A and see what they've done. Well, they have 2.46, and let's see, it looks like that's right, 2.46. But, you know, again, I think we should go ahead and label ours. So we've got ones, we've got tens, we've got hundreds, we've got thousands, and then on the other side we've got tenths and hundredths and thousands. Awesome. So let's see, is that right? 2.46. Awesome. And this time, instead of multiplying by 10, we're dividing by 10. Okay. So it looks like we're by 10 again. So it looks like we're going to move a place value again. So it looks like they took two ones and they divided by 10 to get, oh, two tenths. And they took our four tenths, they divided by 10, and they got four hundredths. And they took our six hundredths, they divided by 10, and they got six thousands. So it looks like it works exactly the opposite of the way that multiplying by, by 10 did. We shift all of our numbers one place value to the right to make them a tenth as big as they were before. So let's see if we can do problem number 2b. Problem number 2b. Well, we've got our number, 678. So let's see, here's our decimal point. So this must be 678. And you know, hey, this reminds me, I should probably do my place value. So Let's see, that's 10, I'm sorry, 1s, 10s, 100s, 1000s, 10ths, 100ths, 1000s. Awesome. But this time we are dividing by 100. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I think we are going to need to divide by 100. We're going to need to move two whole place values to the right. Let's see, I think we'll do it like this. So I think... Our 600s, if we divided 6 by 100, we would get 6. We go two place values over, and we would get 6 ones. And we have 7 tens, and we divide by two place values, we would get 7 tenths. And if we had 8 ones, and we divide by two place values, we would get 8 one hundredths. So I think our answer would be 
seven eight. We would have moved over two values, so six point seven eight. Awesome. I'm going to leave 2C for you to do. I'm going to do one more problem tonight. I'm going to do problem number five. On a map, let's see, this is a story problem, so we're going to do our read, draw, and write strategy. So let's read first, okay? Uh, on a map, the perimeter of a park is 0 0.251 meters. The actual perimeter of the park is 1,000 times as large. What is the actual perimeter of the park? Explain how you know using a place value chart. Huh. So we start off with a measurement, 2.51 meters, but the real perimeter, that's just on a map, right? So that's why it's so small. But the actual perimeter is 1,000 times bigger. So it looks like we're going to take, need to take this number and we're going to need to multiply it by 1,000. So I'm going to draw a place value chart. Let's see. What can we do? Boy, oh boy. See how sloppy my place value chart gets. Let's see. I think my decimal is going to go there because I need. I know that I need three places. One, two, three to the right of the decimal. Let's see. And I'm going to label that. Uh, that was tenths, hundredths, and thousands. And then on the left side of the decimal, I have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see if we need anything that quite that big. Let's see, and now what my original number is 0 0.251 meters. So we have 0 ones, 2 tenths, 5 hundredths, and 1 thousandth. Okay, that's 0 0.251 meters. Okay, I think that's right. So we've begun to our drawing part here. Let's see, the actual perimeter of the park is 1,000 times as large. Okay, 1,000 times as large. Well, you know what? 1,000 times as large... I think the easy way to calibrate our thinking here is that something in the ones unit, if it got a thousand times as large, would be in the thousands unit. So that's one, two, three slots over. So we would take our ones unit and we would make it into thousands. Thousands, sorry. We would take our two and slide it over three place values and make that into hundreds. We would take our hundredths, which are are five, we have five of them, we would slide those over one, two, three spots over and make it into tens, and we would take our one thousandth and we would slide it over one, two, three, we would slide it into the ones. And that makes sense, right? Just just, just literally in, ling in language, right? If we had a thousandth and we made it a thousand times bigger, it would be one. One. Awesome. So let's see, what's our result? We don't have any thousands, we don't have any ten thousands, but we have two hundreds, we have five tens, and we have one one. So that looks to me like 251. But wait, when we do our right part of our strategy, we actually have to write out a sentence. So let's see, where, what is the actual perimeter of the park? So I'm going to say the perimeter is actually... 251, let's see, what was our unit? Uh, 250 meters. 251 meters. Not miles, not kilometers, meters, right? Excellent. The perimeter is two, is actually 251 meters. And now we've done our read, draw, and write strategy. And now we are done with problem number five. I'm going to hope that you guys can get a chance to attack problems number three and problems number four. And I ask you to join me again next time on another fifth grade edition of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Thanks.